Hey there everyone, welcome to the channel, and we're doing something really special today. So, Luminar 3, Luminar with Libraries from Skylum, is coming out in the near future. So it's not available yet, and I'm recording this before it's available. I'm actually allowed to post this now, but we're going to do a longer series here on Luminar 3, because this has been something I've been waiting for. So, I purchased Aurora HDR from Skylum several years ago and when it first hit the marketplace and then I purchased Luminar later. My understanding was that Luminar was going to be the Lightroom replacement. Um, that didn't quite happen and some of the Luminar community has been a little bothered and here we are finally we've got Luminar with libraries. Now I attended a webinar just the other day about this and I have to say it's not it's not there yet for me to consider replacing Lightroom. With that said, we're still going to take a look at this. We're going to check out the features. We're going to see how their library works. And we're going to go through the editing in there, too. Now, one of the things I can say is I'm pretty happy with Luminar as an editor to create some really highly stylized images. This is a very powerful program. The disappointment was that the library functionality isn't what everyone was hoping for. So we're going to talk about all that. We're going to talk about the good and the bad. And keep in mind, so I'm talking to photographers and drone photographers as well on this one. And there's going to be a lot of reviews out there, and mine might get lost in the noise. But if you're here, I hope you hang with me because I'm really going to walk you through this. And I'm going to walk you through this in such a way that I just literally opened up Luminar 3. And we're going to see what the Let's Get Started is all about and how this works. So I'm going to click on Let's Get Started and tell Luminar where your photos are. So we can tell them where the photos are and we can modify where the photos are. Um, I don't think I want to tell them where photos are yet. Uh, I don't want it in pictures for the moment. So I'm going to choose a different location. I'm going to go over to, let's see here, my all image galleries. And under my all image galleries, I'm going to go to my Lightroom libraries. And I'm going to go to my Udemy um, course where I've got a lot of images. So let's grab this. So this is almost 100% drone flight images and a lot of bracketed photos for HDR. Now remember, Skylum also makes Aurora HDR. So one of the things I want to know about is how does Luminar talk to Aurora? We're going to find that out. So I'm going to choose this folder. I'm not going to change anything. So there we go image galleries. I can add another folder or I can add folders later. And I'm just going to hit next for now. And what do we have here? Luminar and your disk are in full sync. Forget importing. All changes to your disk will stay in sync with Luminar and vice versa. So my understanding from the webinar the other day is that the editing that we do in here is non-destructive. So we can always get back to our original image, which is incredibly important. And one of the powerful features that I liked about Lightroom. So if we've got non-destructive images, uh, image editing in here, then that's great. So let's go ahead and we're going to access quickly and manage easily. So we're going to easily browse, locate, manage your photos in the library panel. You can find all your pictures there. You'll have quick access with their shortcuts. Okay. So next thing, do more with a single click. This is about their presets. And I've liked some of their presets over the past year, and I've played with them on some of my own photography. So, sounds good by me. I'm going to hit next again. Powerful tools always within your reach. So the edit panel contains everything we need. And yes, that edit panel is very powerful, and all of the filters are very powerful. So, if you're looking to do some highly customized images quickly, Luminar is a way to go for sure. And like I said, I'm not selling this for them. Um... I wanted to do a real and honest review here, so that's what we're doing. And then you can create your own workspaces. I've played with this previously as well in Luminar, and the workspaces are all right. Um, in the end, though, you know, all the workspaces are just about some presets of what filters you might want to use. And in the end, usually I just end up going through and picking filters by hand. All right. So make sure your photos get seen. Click the rightmost button. So right over here, that's the exporter. 
And that's one other thing that uh, bothers me a little, and we'll talk about that as we get into this series. So let's go. All right. Um, hmm. So, yeah, I'm importing a library. Didn't really import the library. It's actually just looking at that library. And so I've got one folder. And look at that. I've got 1,719 images, most of which were utilized in my, um, in my drone photography course that I've got over on Udemy. So... Let's see what's going on new here. So we got a buy now up here. And actually, I already have my um, key code for this. They sent me a, a registration code. So let's activate this. And I'm going to go ahead and um, edit this part because I don't want you to get my activation key. Sorry. All right. So I've activated it now. And we've got large, small. So let's take a look really quick at what we've got up here. Number one. We can import images or add a folder. We can also open images for a quick edit. So we've got our standard file, edit, library, image, view, window. And as always, there's always shortcut keys going on here as well. And let's see, we can take a look at all photos. So if we did other albums and shortcuts, we could add those in. And let's take a look here. So side panel is being shown right now. And we're on medium, we could go to small. All right, so some of these images in here were actually used for doing 3D models, and we're probably going to be bypassing them, but like, let's take a look at this. So what is this image? All right, we've got all of our down on the bottom, some of our presets from Essentials. So this is an edited image that I've already worked on previously. Okay, let's hit the G key and go back. So G gets you back to the grid view, by the way. And if we look in here, there we go. So this is an edit TIFF. Let's continue scrolling down here and seeing what else we've got in here. Here's a DNG um, that could probably use a little love. So let's look at that one and then that one. Okay, so yeah, I've done some work on some of these. Now, one of the things that I'm noticing here, um, these images are part of an auto bracketed stack. So I took five photos to create HDRs with Aurora. Let me like right click in here. So I'm just trying this and testing this. This is not a tutorial. I'm checking things out. So open in Aurora HDR. So right click, I could open in Aurora, which is very cool. Let's hit that G key again. And I'm gonna take a look here. So that one I'm just arrowing through. So those are all related images very clearly. Underexposed, okay, so this is where my shot moved. So one, two, three, four, five. So there I go. Now, why am I interested in this? Well, I'm an Aurora user and I've shot bracketed images with, um, with my DJI. Mavic. So this is one, two, three, four, five. I can't stack these, so I could set a rating or a color, but I cannot stack these to hide them away. So one of the things I like to be able to do in Lightroom when I'm doing lots of auto bracketed photos is I like to stack them so that my screen isn't so messy, so that I don't have all these images up here. Now, in the case of Luminar with libraries right now, um, we don't have that as a possibility. So I have selected these five, and what I want to do is I want to send them to Aurora HDR. So let's see what happens. I might be cutting this video up um, into different segments because clearly I'm jumping ahead of things. Uh, I'm not playing with the library yet. Uh, instead, I'm playing, oh, look at this. So sending these to Aurora has sent them individually. So here's the Aurora interface. And so it's only showing me one bracketed shot, even though I'm sending all five. So I'm gonna cancel that. And I already own Aurora, so why is Aurora doing a buy now? I don't understand that. Um, let's see, let's go down to Aurora 2018, Aurora 2019. Oh, this was my Aurora 2018. And um, so it was trying to do this with Aurora 2018. And it should be doing it with Aurora 2019. All right, so right now, 
off the cuff, just playing around and testing, um, I can't send my five bracketed photos over to Aurora. So that's going to have to be something that I take a look at um, in the near future. And it'll probably be in a new video because I just looked at the time here and we're already blowing through some time. So let's stop with that and let's just take a look at this one. So I can, let's see here, I can give it a different color. Oh, what happened there? I can favorite it. So I could uh, say, yeah, I've got a favorite here. And now on the library area, I've got one item in favorites. Um, let's go ahead and hit the G key again. So I have now favorited that and I can see that it's favorited down below. And I can continue looking through these things. So right now also, um, Keywording and sorting by keywords is not available at the moment. So we can look at all photos, favorites, rejected, unmarked, things with stars, things colored, or edited things. Let me click on that. Okay, so I have not edited anything in here with, with Luminar. And so nothing is coming up. However, to be fair... Um, there are a bunch of TIFFs in here, along with raw photos. So the TIFFs are things that were edited. So right now, it's only when we when we show edited things, it's only things edited specifically with Luminar. All right, I get that. That makes sense to me. And then we've got a folder of recently added. How else can we filter these things? So we can filter it by capture time, edit time, filter them by rating, pics, color labels, and filter by file name. Uh, by file type and by file size. So by file type, we should be able to find all of our TIFFs, um, all of our RAW, all of our JPEGs. So that's kind of useful. But still, I'm going to have a hard time finding everything that I'm looking for right off the bat. So in Lightroom, I can actually sort things and filter things based on keywords that I add um, when I'm importing. So here, right now, this is more of a folder management system. So I can actually go through and look by date. Oh boy, I don't want to do that because I don't remember every date that I shot. Was that, you know, did I shoot that wedding in July or August? Did I do that drone photo uh, last year or this year? Um, so that's a little tough. All right. Like I said, we're just doing a quick overview. First impressions, first loading it up. And then in the next segment... We're actually going to walk through this much slower, and I'm going to generate some images um, for specific use with uh, Lightroom with libraries. So right now, my gut feeling on the library is I know that it's incomplete, and wow, that was something weird happening again. Remember, um, this is the pre-launch version, so there might be some other issues going on. So I'm just looking at that one that we favorited before, and I can go up here and go into the edit module. So there we go and we can pick our filters or we can pick our workspace. So I'm going to do an aerial photography workspace. And right now we've got uh, several filters are offered up. So the workspaces are ways that you can reuse the same filters over and over again. So we did aerial photography and the color temperature on this one does look a little cool. So I'm going to warm it just a bit and that looks a little better to me. I'm not going to change the tint at the moment. Let's try that Accent AI filter, and let's just jack that up. So what's happening here? Well, let's see the differences. All right, so much more faded look from the beginning and definitely a little too cool. We've now used the Accent AI filter to boost that up a little bit. And let's play with that new sky enhancer that they've been really pumping away on and very interesting, a little too much, so... Dial the Sky Enhancer back here. Whites and blacks. Ah, oh, there's our good old dehaze filter. Just uh, too much over the top. I don't think dehaze belongs in here with that sky filter. I'm not even going to use the polarizing one. And saturation and vibrance. Maybe we'll push the vibrance up just a little more. And yep, so that's looking pretty decent. Clarity, we could uh, definitely bump up the edginess and the detail a little more. Let's zoom in here. And we do have some pixelation and noise in here from all of the work we've done. Let's take a look at the before and after. So we've definitely added more noise in. So we're not going to go through all these features here and play around with the edits right now. Um, right hand side, we can pick our filters. 
uh, we can play with our filters. And as you can see, I really do like some of the power of Luminar uh, really being able to recover an image that's not fantastic. So with, with the new Luminar with libraries on the right side, we still have our editor. Down below, we still have our different presets, so we can take a look at the different presets that the folks over at Skylum offer to us. And then on the left-hand side, we have our library browser. If I hit the G key, we go back to the grid view. If you're a Lightroom user, it's the same thing there. In the next segment, we're actually going to set up a library, um, a specific library for new images that I'll shoot with the drone and maybe some, some uh, terrestrial-based stuff as well. And we'll come in here, we'll take a look at the library features, and um, from taking a look at the library features, we'll also talk about uh, editing with Luminar. So what I've seen so far, like I said, this is a quick blast. I just opened this for the first time, so you've been with me for the brand new opening. And so what I can say for the libraries is the libraries are falling short of the expectation that I have for them, given all the time I've spent on Lightroom and how flexible it is with all of my sorting and selecting. But in the, in the um, next video that we're going to do, we will import things specifically for testing Luminar with libraries. We'll play around them with the libraries, and then we'll also talk about the editing. So off the bat, initial impressions, hey, they're coming along with it, and they're making an effort, but um, we're going to need to see more with the libraries, and we'll check that out in the next episode, um, what we can and can't do with the libraries and why it might get unwieldy very fast. Uh, you know, I just imported uh, 1,719 photos, and... Um, Finding them easily and breaking things out into day by day is going to take some work. And as you can see, there's a lot of bad photos in here um, because, you know, because Mavic Pro number one versus Mavic Pro number two. So most of these are from the Mavic Pro, not the Mavic 2 Pro. We'll talk about that, too, for all of our for all of our drone followers as well. All right, everyone. So. We'll see you on the next episode, and on that next episode, we're going to really dive in deep to creating a totally new catalog from scratch with Luminar and seeing how the library feature works.